Hey guys, welcome back to a new video in this channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at a very important topic, something that's a little bit mysterious for uh, beginner students, but I'm going to be explaining it in the best possible way. So let's go. Now, uh, before we continue, sorry, the thing for the camera hasn't arrived yet. As I mentioned in the last couple of videos, it's supposed to arrive on next Monday. So hopefully it arrives a little bit earlier and we can get back to, you know, seeing each other face to face rather than this awkward uh, movement. Uh, but you're gonna have to forgive me. I was actually thinking about like turning the whole thing off, but I think, I think it's good to just keep it like this. I mean, it's not a big deal, right? So I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna show you again one of the uh, characters that we're using. Actually, this character we're using it for the Marmoset course, which is gonna be launching very, very soon. Um, and uh, we're also gonna be taking a look at subsurface scattering inside of Marmoset once we get there. But today we're gonna about we are gonna be talking about subsurface scattering inside of uh, Substance Painter. How can you create a channel for subsurface? How can you use subsurface? And most importantly, how can you uh, properly like calibrate how much subsurface you want your character to have, right? So. Uh, here's the deal with subsurface. Before we jump onto the onto the main thing here, let me show you real quick what subsurface is, because some of you might be like, okay, I've heard that name before, but what does it actually mean? Well, usually in 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 the world, there's different kinds of uh, surfaces. For instance, uh, let me see, like this thing right here, like this little Wacom thing. This we would call a an opaque material, right? Because the light touches the material and it bounces right off. And then we also have materials that are transparent. So. Uh, we're going to have uh, rays of light going through the object and we can pretty much see through it. Of course, any material that's transparent, like this bottle of plastic or like a glass of, uh, of wine or whatever, uh, they're going to refract light a little bit. So there's always going to be a little bit of uh, deformation. You're not going to see everything like perfectly. Otherwise, uh, th there will be nothing, right? So, um, so yeah, but there's also certain kinds of materials like skin, wax, uh, jade, marble. Like there's a lot of... Uh, very specific materials that have this uh, specific, let's call it, property where light actually goes into different layers. I'm going to make a diagram right here real quick. So imagine you usually have, where's my mouse? There we go. So you usually have your, your layer and then the, the rate of light hits the layer. It gets a bounce off of the object and your camera, of course, uh, checks what that object is or looks like and it like understands that information, processes it and gives you the render. Uh, transparent objects will bend the uh, ray and then the ray will eventually come back to the camera and that's what you see through it. But subsurface scattering objects, they will have different layers and a rays of light will pretty much penetrate at different uh, depths of the layer and then they will bring color out of, the, of that uh, specific like uh, information and into the camera. So skin is usually the one that people talk the most about because uh, when you do this sort of thing where you place your, your fingers behind a, a very strong light, you're gonna see how on the borders you get this very reddish hue. And the reason is our skin is actually made out of, of a lot of layers and layers are not completely opaque, they're semi-transparent. We, we can't see through ourselves, of course, because they're very, very dense, but the, the layers do have a little bit of, uh, of transparency or kind of like opacity, right? So uh, this surface effect is really expensive. Performance-wise, subsurface is expensive. So more often than not, you're gonna see people doing fake subsurface. If you've seen our um, stylized character creation uh, for games, I believe, uh, that one, we use a little bit of fake subsurface on the on the painting process so that we don't have to uh, rely on, on actually doing like the, the mathematical performance or mathem mathematical calculations to get this thing right here. However, uh, in the re recent years, in recent years, uh, the, um, the technology has gotten really, really good. And now uh, it used to be that subsurface was really difficult to do and it was really uh, complicated to, to work with. But nowadays it's, it's a lot easier. So I'm going to show you real quick how it works. First of all, in the same way as where uh, when we did our uh, opacity, we need to add uh, the channel. So I'm going to go here to the channel and you can see that we, we can't support the scattering. We need the scattering. That is because we're probably using a very outdated uh, material here. So let me grab the, the newest one because this guy was created a long time ago, well, like three years ago or something. So now we should be able to add a scattering uh, channel. So now we have our scattering channel. Uh, that does not mean that we have scattered yet, but now the channel is, is uh, properly here. So now th there's three places where you're gonna have to set up your scattering here inside of su uh, Substance. The first one is this one, the texture set settings. The second one is up here on the material tab. You're gonna have to go down here and you're gonna make sure that subsurface scattering uh, is set to enable. Now, as you can see, this is the redshift. It's set to redshift, which is the default. We can set it to skin, that's fine. Uh, and the scatter color is gonna be the, the albedo. So the albedo is the, the color that's gonna get like blurred out or scattered. Uh, and, and we're gonna be controlling it with this scale right here and with the color. 
Now, uh, as you can see, we still have no subsurface. And the reason is we still need to go up here and go all the way down here and make sure that subsurface scattering is turned on. Now, uh, the subsurface scattering, as I mentioned, it's an extra uh, processing power. That's why we have the sample here because the samples are going to tell us uh, where the subsurface is happening or not and how nice it's going to look, right? Now, the problem is we still have no subsurface. So we've uh, already set our texture set, we've set up our shader, and we've set up our display settings. So why are we not seeing any sort of subsurface? Well, first of all, we need a very strong light on the back, like something like this, so that we can see the, the intensity coming through the, through the thin areas. And now we need to add a layer that tells uh, substance where things are going to be. So I'm just going to add one layer here, one field layer at the very top. And as you can see, the layer by default will have the subsurface scattering right here. So right now it's turned off. Uh, but if I turn everything off and I set the scattering all the way up, you're going to see how the character immediately changes to this sort of like uh, gelatinous uh, character, right? It, it looks like a gummy bear. Uh, of course, we're seeing the color still on top of the of the whole thing. But now with this layer, which I'm going to call SSS, we're, we're seeing like everything being affected. And that's not really how it works. I mean, subsurface so scattering is present on every single part of our bodies. However, thinner parts are going to be more obvious or we're going to be able to see them a little bit easier than uh, thicker parts. OK, so the first thing I want to do is I want to calibrate this a little bit better. So I'm actually going to go to our uh, display settings. And let me see if I can find like a very strong light, like uh, not, not a studio light, like this one right here. There we go. So this is studio low contrast front. There we go. So now we have like a very, there's no temperature, no nothing. And you can see that on the borders, like the, the ears right here, a little bit of the bicep, or sorry, the, 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 damn, the deltoid right here, we're seeing the, the little bit of effect. Now, if we were to go to the shader parameters, we can increase the scale or decrease the scale, and you're going to see how this either increases or decreases, OK? So depending on the scale, uh, you're going to get a little bit of a different result. Now, the color is also going to be important. We go like really, really bright red. You can see how now we're getting that very, very nice subsurface scattering effect. Look at that. That's a little bit too much, of course. So I'm going to bring the, the scale down so that we don't see as much of that effect. But yeah, I mean, subsurface scattering, as you can see, is going to give us a very, very nice natural look to the to the skin. And it's going to make it so that everything looks very nice. However, and again, this is the important part, we need to make sure that we don't add the subsurface scattering everywhere because we, we, we want to control where the subsurface scattering is going to be, right? Uh, or at least the intensity of it. So I'm going to go here to the SSS shader or layer, and I'm going to say add a black mask. So that immediately is going to remove the subsurface scattering. As you can see, it's a quite a big change, right? We switch the mask here, invert the mask. That's with subsurface, that's without subsurface. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to be using, we don't need this one anymore. I'm going to be using a fill layer and I'm going to be using the geometry map that we created, which is the thickness map. And the thickness map is a very cool map because uh, when we bake this, as you can see there on the little thumbnail, the thin parts are going to be darker and uh, the, like the big chunky parts are going to be wider. So what I need to do here, of course, is I need to invert this because I want the subsurface to be uh, white and everything else to be black. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say add levels. And on the levels uh, modifier, I'm going to invert this so that we can now see, as you can see, the subsurface only on the places where I want it to see. Now, here's another thing that's important to know this or to understand. The subsurface that we're like modifying here on this character will need to be tweaked again once we go into like Maya or Marmoset or whatever engine we decide to use. Because right now we're using the material that's inside of Substance and we can't export the material from Substance. So we're going to have to adapt whatever maps and whatever elements we create here from Substance so that we are uh, able to use them on, on other uh, engines, okay? So here, as you can see, uh, we have the subsurface and it's very, very intense. Now, the cool thing about using these levels, though, is that, remember, the levels always represent the whiters, the whitest whites and the blackest blacks on your image. And if I were to move this thing around, I'm going to add more subsurface. Or if I were to move this thing back, I'm going to crank or, or soften the subsurface. So, so you can actually use your, your levels here to play around with how much subsurface you want. Usually, I like to keep it soft, something like this. And I'm going to bring the blacks out. There we go. Now, this is this is not a layer that you would do like linear dodge or anything, because this is actually not doing anything on the color. It's it's on the material itself. So if you want to tweak it, if you think ah, this is a little bit too much or the, the intensity is a little bit too much for, for my for my liking, then what we need to do, of course, is we need to go to the shader over here. 
and either decrease the color, go to like a like a softer pink, for instance, that's going to decrease the intensity as well, or decrease the scale. If you have zero scale, of course, of course there's going to be nothing. And if you have like a really high scale, it, this is not an intensity slider, by the way, this is a scale slider. So imagine that we have like a gummy bear, like small gummy bear, and then imagine we buy one of those like big gummy bears that they sell uh, like as a gift. Um, they're both made up of the same material, but due to the thickness, they're going to be uh, modifying the light in different ways. So technically our character here, and I, I believe I modeled him that way when I uh, did it, should be at real scale. So as long as I calibrate this properly, which should be 0.5, uh, it should be like diffusing in the way it, like real skin would diffuse. Uh, if it's too much, then I can lower the scale. That means that the object is going to be uh, bigger, but it's not like it's going to be bigger. The effect is going to be less intense. And, uh, and of course, it's not going to penetrate as much on the on the skin. So yeah, like as you can see here, this this looks very, very nice. I still think that the red's a little bit too red. So I'm going to lower the, the intensity a little bit so it's not as red. We get this more look of, like a, of, a, of a pinkish effect. And again, as you can see here, one of the issues is that um, we, we don't have any like arms or, or belt or anything. So on the borders of the character where things are thin as well, you're going to see that we have this sort of, uh, this sort of effect. So... If you want to increase the samples, which is what we talked about before, you can go here and by increasing the, the samples of the object right here, the uh, subsurface effect is going to look even smoother. However, just keep in mind that this is going to be taking a toll on your uh, computer, on your graphics card, so it might not be what you want. And finally, let's just take a look at how it would look on an actual render. We're going to go to the eye right here. Tomorrow, we're going to be taking this guy into Maya, and I'm going to be showing you how to uh, calibrate this guy so that it works properly. Now, I, I got this issue with the... Um, what this? I think it's the light. The light's way too white. So let's go for like another s sort of light. So I'm going to go... Now, now let's go to something like... A, uh, what would be good for... Uh, Yeah, like Corsica pitch. There we go. So now, as you can see, if we move this thing back like this, you're going to see how the subsurface is affecting the character. So you can see that the nose and the ears are getting this sort of like very dark tone. Here's where I would definitely go and say, hey, maybe yeah, it's a little bit more color. might not be a bad idea. And maybe the scale is a little bit too too intense. So let's let's lower the intensity here. And let me turn this off right here. And one thing we can also do, I think uh, one of the reasons why things are looking a little bit weird is because this guy is very outdated. I, I, I remember doing him like a long, long time ago. So I'm not sure if uh, if there's some sort of conflict with the shader or something, because as you can see here on the viewport, it looks very good. And then here on the on the element, it looks very like washed out. And I think that's the, that's the color texture that's uh, for some reason like behaving weirdly. Uh, but yeah, I mean, as you can see, that's the actual subsurface scattering uh, doing its job. And, um, and that's the sort of effect we're going to be going for. So I'm going to do something real quick here because I, I, I'm going to be saving this for, for the next video. And I'm just going to export the texture. So I'm going to export textures here. Let's go to our uh, next to the live. Uh, next to the live. Oh, by the way, guys, I've been thinking about doing a sort of like a work review. Uh, I, I wanted to bounce the idea with you guys and see if, if that's something that you might want. We can do like a series where you guys submit things and every now and then I'll, I'll record and, um, and show you what I would change, what I would uh, modify, things that are very good, things that might need some work. And, uh, and that way you can learn not only from each other, but from uh, the feedback that we can give you. So if that's something that you might be interested in, let us know in the comments. I, I can't promise that we can do that daily or uh, every other day, but we can do it relatively frequently. Uh, we just need to find a way in which you can share, safely share the, share the files uh, with us. So let's call this dwarf. And here we're going to export. So we're going to export this as an Ar Arnold AI standard. And... Um, one thing that we're not going to be able to export because it's not on the template is the, um, what's the word? It's the, the mask. So I'm going to show you how to export the mask because again, we need to rebuild the, the, um, what's the word? The, the subsurface material inside of Maya. So right here, I'm just going to export so that we get like the traditional, uh, maps that we usually get in, uh, in the, in the Arnold. I think having some like, like mental block blackouts or something in the last, couple of weeks it's, it's horrible so right click here and i'm just gonna i'm gonna go to the mask here to the subsurface mask and i'm gonna say uh export mask where is it to do, do, do. export mask to file there we go and we're gonna export this of course on the exact same uh place on our 
next to live images, not the images, assets, dwarf, and this we're gonna call SSS mask. Is it possible to export it with presets like we, what we saw a couple of days ago? Yes, of course we can. Uh, but right now it's, it's, it's just one mask, so I'm just gonna export it and, and that's it. So now if we take a look at the, at the files real quick, it's gonna be the last part of the video. We're just gonna take a look at the, uh, what we have and I want to make sure it's especially the color because I was a little bit concerned about the color in the in the eye ray so I was just want to shoot I just want to make sure that the color looks uh, proper yeah it looks okay so that's 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 close to what we have so I think we're gonna be fine maybe it was the roughness or something we'll, we'll check it out anyway uh, that's it guys let us know what you think about this um, we're gonna be doing a couple of tips and tricks in the next couple of days so today it's subsurface scattering tomorrow is gonna be subsurface scattering inside of Maya with Arnold and then I'm gonna be talking about a very nice interesting topic on Saturday and Sunday we have a surprise so make sure to keep in touch make sure to leave a like uh, subscribe comment Click the little bell. I think the little bell sends you notifications whenever we do or post anything. So make sure to, to uh, do that as well. And remember, we also have uh, our courses. So check down the description if you're interested in any of the courses that we teach. Uh, there's a lot of them. I teach a lot of them. There's a lot of other great teachers that do as well. And uh, yeah, everything's for you guys. So hope, hope you liked all of this and I'll see you back tomorrow. And this is a goodbye.